All right, now let's go into this. Um, what is one sector all of us are looking to invest in over the next year mm -hmm. that is essentially inflation proof and recession proof? Oof. For me, um, absolutely, without a shadow of a doubt, healthcare as my uh... leading player <laughs> in that space, Eli Lilly. I'm from Indiana. I have a ton of friends that uh, work in Indianapolis, work at Lilly, but anyone who is familiar, um, they are my leading player in that space. So if we look at the growth, even because there was a lot of companies that did well post um, COVID in, in the healthcare space, but not many have done as well as Eli Lilly. If we go back to 2014, the stock was at $50.78. It's at $317 now and 27 cent. Um, and they've continuously had stable growth, stable gains. And technically, they've had maybe one bad month since 2011. One bad month. And it's, it's Eli Lilly is one of those companies like Tim Duncan is underappreciated because it's not the flashiest. It's like, well, I don't have a cure for Corona in two days. And if you drink this tea with this elderberry syrup, right? They've consistently throughout, shout out to everybody who likes elderberry. It helped me when I had COVID. Thank you, Safari. Um, but when I um, am looking at healthcare companies that have consistent growth and uh, a stock that I never lose sleep over, Eli Lilly is the lead uh, player that I would draft that is inflation and recession proof. Ah, oh, man. Those, I, I, you know what? I wrote two because I figured you'd probably say healthcare. Yeah. But I, ha I had healthcare. And the number one reason I wrote it was because people are always going to get sick. Like, that's Absolutely. something that it doesn't matter, recession or not. People are always going to get sick. People are always going to need treatment. People are always going to need medicine. That will, that, it doesn't matter what the, fi the financial climate is. Yeah. Um, and so you had Lily on there, of course. I knew you would. Um, but I wrote down a few others. I had CVS on there. Mm -hmm. um, just, just the strong companies, Johnson and Johnson, obviously Pfizer, Johnson, obviously, so what they did, great. Yeah. and like one of these slept on companies that nobody really thinks about, Walgreens, right? Like, people are always going to need treatment. They're going to need their medicine. They're going to need to get it from somewhere. These are just solid companies. So I had healthcare, but also had agriculture in there as well, right? And I spoke about it kind of on um, when we were at the Breakfast Club. Mm -hmm. Like, what is these one of these recession proof areas? And I'm like, well, are we always going to need food? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then based on the conversation, one of the, you know, the conversation we had, absolutely, week, it made even more evident, like, I'm, I'm glad this came up. And I'm like, wait, we're always going to need food, mm -hmm. right? We should be looking at the commodities or looking at companies. And I spoke about it. I spoke about Kellogg's. I talked about Campbell, like, these are just steady companies yeah. that are consistent, no matter the economic climate, because we're always going to need food. Um, so agriculture, healthcare, I knew you was going to say healthcare. So that's why I came up with another one. But sometimes the right answer is the one that we unanimously agree upon. Um, so for everyone listening, we both agreed on healthcare. Please write that down. If you're looking for something outside of tech, that probably, I won't say probably, it should be the second industry or sector that you're looking to invest in for sure. Right. So, um, yeah, I'll actually um, go a different direction with this conversation. and I'm, I'm going to give them some insight to that conversation that we had on Saturday, on Too Sunday, um, <laughs> hit you. I'm gonna hit y'all with something that what Jay said. I'm gonna hit y'all with some something that could change your life up. Um, very insightful insight that was given to us about sellers' market and buyers' market. Mm -hmm. And there's, there's only there's, there's two types of markets in this world: sellers' market and the buyers' market. And the gentleman, Kaiser Sose, we'll call him, who, uh, <laughs> who was giving us this 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 talk. And, you know, I was talking to him and I'm like, I, you know, he's like, I only want to be in, um, in seller's market. I don't want to be in a buyer's market. I was like, what do you, what do you mean? Mm -hmm. he's like, all right, let me explain it to you in ways that you could probably understand. He's like, when you go to a gas station, have you ever seen anybody negotiate the prices of gas at the gas station? I like, no, I've never seen it before. Mm -hmm. like, right. Whatever it is, you just pay it. He's like, like where we live, the, the light company is called Con Edison. It's like Con Edison. Um, they give you your light bill and you pay it. And if mm -hmm. you don't pay it, then they cut your lights off. Yes. Gas, they, certain things are just non-negotiable. And even went so far to say, you know, even luxury items has become a seller's market where like Louis Vuitton, you haven't seen a sale. Rolex, you're not negotiating prices of a Rolex. You just buy it. 
if you can buy, if you even yeah, you need an invitation to buy. Yeah, if you're even lucky enough to even get one. In reverse, the seller, the sellers, mar- the buyers, buyers market, market is yeah. like a flea market. So like you go to a flea market, somebody has a painting for a hundred dollars. You say I got fifty dollars for you. You settle on seventy five. Or mm-hmm. well, people, you know, you're always doing discounts and different things of that nature, 50% off sales, stuff like that. That's more of a buyer's market because now the buyer's in control. And he was saying that that's not really sustainable mm-hmm. and it's not something that you want to be in as a business owner. So we had a whole half an hour conversation about that. And he was saying that, you know, he didn't, he doesn't really, he's not even really a big fan of the stock market. Mm-hmm. But he did say two stocks and specifically that he thought were, Sell it with buyers, yes. with sellers. sellers market. Yeah, he said seller market. <laughs> and, and which one were they were shot? <laughs> Please enlighten us. <laughs> we said, may have heard them. Stock said, number one, Apple. Yes, and Microsoft. Mike, right there. Like put Microsoft right here. <laughs> <laughs> put the logo in his hand. Yes, so, please do. So he explained. He explained why he thought that Apple and Microsoft fit in that category. And he was like, you know, Apple has become such a, such a necessity of life. He kind of compared it to, he was like, no, you have to like food is a necessity. Mm -hmm. Um, Transportation on a certain level is a necessity. Um, Light is a necessity. He was like, your cell phone has become a necessity. Yes. Like it's the most affordable computer ever. It's non negotiable. And especially when they have, when you add in all their verticals, they are in a seller's market. Mm-hmm. and they can constantly increase their prices. They can do whatever they want. And they really have no other alternative in mass to erase them. And then he, and then he started talking about Microsoft as well, mm-hmm. or all of their different verticals. Mm-hmm. And he was saying that they are in a seller's market right now. What do like, I know? <laughs> but everything. <laughs> so, so I just thought that that was interesting. Um, so I say that to say, um, of course, Apple and Microsoft, but any anything that is a seller's market is 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 where you want to be and where you want to be invested in, and where where it's non negotiable, where you have to do it, mm-hmm. where the price is only going to go up over the course of time, mm-hmm. um, and it's just that's just what it is. Yeah. Like imagine if there was a software company that um, predicted where the market was going to go, gave you the prices for four hedge funds, did, and they were more accurate than Goldman, Citadel, Credit Suisse, right? What would that be worth? That is the Red Panda Stock Club. You can join us for shock. Put the link in bio. <laughs> Sellers market, right? Because if you frame it more accurate than Kathy, yeah, up there with no regrets, like some of the greats of all time. I mean, I know four months ago, six months ago, that Bitcoin 20K price sounded crazy when it was at 55,000. Now people are begging to break above 24,000, hovering around 18 or 19,000. That is a, so when people even be like, well, Stock Club is a lot for 10 grand. Every advisor that I've ever talked to, they were like, if you, if I were you, I would be charging 10,000 per call for the prices you're giving. Seller's market. Yeah. Yeah, it's a seller's market. This is the price is what it is. Red Panda has become a seller's market. Invest Fest has become a seller's, seller's market. market. Um, because it was like even like when we was leading up towards the Invest Fest, it just every day it just kept getting crazy and crazy. And we was worried about capacity. And I'm like, right, how do we limit capacity? Just raise the price. When we raise the price, people kept buying it. it. Yeah, didn't stop and it. And the demand grew every day. It's a different announcement. Dan Cathy and Tyler Perry and all these mm-hmm. people. And now it becomes. There's no discounts. They're not running a discount for InvestFest. There's no 50% off sale. Mm-hmm. Price is only going up because the value is there. The value of the brand's going up. Seller's market. There's no alternative. So it's it's a seller's it's a seller's market. You've created yes. a monopoly. Now you have a seller's market. And you yeah, no different. Louis Vuitton. Seller's market. Yeah. The key is, and that's the Apple vertical is crazy because they've created three different verticals that became its own seller's market. So like, that's the thing. Like now that you become one, how do you create one inside of it? Mm-hmm. So, I mean, it's just a brilliant strategy. The seller's market thing. That's one of the, that's one of the best things I've ever heard. And ever. I say, I have to say, it's like every Monday we give you advice, but sometimes you got to get the information and make your own decisions. So now you have the information about a seller's market, right? So now the homework for you is to look to see what's the top seller markets in the world, mm-hmm. right? What is it energy? 
Is it medicine? Is it farming? A, yeah. Is it, what is the top seller markets in the world, right? Research that and research who, are, who has the biggest market share, who, who are the most dominant companies. Mm -hmm. Those are probably the companies that you wanna be invested in because they don't have any competition in the space and they have to. Like one thing about it, every human being has to drink water. That's a seller's market. Yes. That's a seller's market, Make sure right? You labels can't... covered, but yes. Yeah. yeah. Labels covered. <laughs> you have to drink water. You have to eat food. You have to have lights. You have to be able to go places. Like these are all seller's markets. It's or not... in case of lobbying, homework assignment number two Who created that there had to be uh, insurance for drivers and healthcare? Now you lobby your way into insurance being mandatory. Which is, is that, a yeah. seller's market. And it is. Probably the biggest buildings it. in any city that you normally go into are either banks or insurance companies. Yeah. It, Find it, your the, seller's market. The interesting thing is just like open your eyes to opportunity. Yep. Like when you do that type of research, it's like I used to call it like going down the rabbit hole. And every time you went down deeper, you just found out more information. Yes. But like really walk outside. Like when we spoke to to Kaiser, we were just, he, he's just walking outside, just walking outside, looking at opportunity. Every step he took, he saw opportunity. And it was like, wait, that's how we should be looking at life. Like Absolutely. there's opportunity in everything. Um, so that even doing that type of research of, of finding who has a sales mm -hmm. market, like it's gonna lead you to more information, more information. And then your lens, your perspective mm -hmm. on the world and on life is gonna change. I mean, that's the type of power, like in an hour, we mm -hmm. took that from a conversation. It was incredible. Yeah. And I always say Sean Parker had a great idea with Napster. The entire music industry vilified him and then was happy to do business with Steve Jobs. And then Steve Jobs came in with podcasting, which is essentially digital radio and killed radio. And even when people do podcasts and they'd be like, hey, I'm ready to pod, not knowing that the original format to broadcast on a podcast was the iPod. And <laughs> then they tied in the AirPod to it now to listen to. Yeah. So even from a subconscious branding standpoint, no one's like, yo, I'm ready to Stitcher today. Shout out to Stitcher. I love you guys. I used the app for many years, right? Um, so think of how you can even create your own seller's market in the industry for, for which you're in. Or as I used to call it, the ultimate competitive advantage. You have to be able to do something that no one else in the world can do. Amazing conversation though. Yeah. Amazing. I'm, I'm glad you brought that up. I was just reading that like last week about the branding of the word podcast and it coming from the, the, the actual iPod. Mm -hmm. I think about that. It's like Band-Aid, right? Like, <laughs> like yes, it, you think that that abrasive he, adhesive is not the word, right? We think of it as Band-Aid because that's the brand. But like podcast forever will be synonymous with iPod, which yeah. will be synonymous with Apple. This day, Red Panda Anthem. Ian, what's up? This day, Red Panda Anthem. Red Panda, what's good?